see your shirt? Yeah. <laughs> I like your shirt. You too? From Erie Zone Government Access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host. I like it. Your host? Who's the host? Uh, you, I think. No, you are. I'm just your, I'm your cohort today. Maybe DJ will call in. He might. I don't know. I know he watches in Colorado. I think he streams it. He does. Yeah. yeah. You know, the young guys can. can it, isn't it funny that we got the 50-degree weather and they got the snow? Yeah. I saw uh, somebody was put, putting on social media that uh, the, the blizzards going on in the Midwest right now are. D- DJ, that's our. Completely out of control. We finally figured out what caused that that big storm. What was that? DJ. DJ caused it? Yeah. It followed him out west now. Yeah, it did. Because uh, that's funny you say that. Because what I saw was a friend of mine that was in Erie. Went, he drove back home. He lives out west, and he said he drove through that storm. He said he was wish he was he wished he was back here in Erie dealing with the snowstorm that we dealt with. You you got to see the funny games. Um, in in Mississippi, they have one man that stands on a bridge with a bucket and throws salt out. Oh, really? In Mississippi, they even have what kind of Morton salt or what? What kind of salt they have down there? I don't know what they use. <laughs> well, we have the phone working today. Uh, that's Kaz. I'm John Steiner. We are co-hosting. Yes, today. we have we have fans in you. We have we have some people that joined us, and they have like popcorn. Popcorn. I like it. I like. Is it white cheddar or, or regular? Butter. Just butter. Okay. You should. They should have brought the 3D glasses. They should. No, they don't want to see us in 3D. We're we're one dimensional kind of guys. I don't think we want to be 3D, do we? No. No. no we're bad enough as it is. Yeah. Well, there's the number, 870-1284. Give us a call. You know, there's a lot of exciting things going on. Like you know, In the paper today, they're talking about uh, putting a, a fort down and do, bringing some historical remnants back to the uh, East Bayfront for uh, tourism. Oh, that'd be... Go ahead, caller. I'm concerned about the uh, issues with snow removal, especially with commercial properties, Mm -hmm. Um, parks. um, A lot of the commercial places plow their driveways and their parking lots, and they don't clear their sidewalks, and they leave huge snow burns across the sidewalk. And if there was a spirit of enforcement in the city, that wouldn't happen. And if there was a spirit of enforcement against businesses specifically, there would soon be the capacity to provide that sidewalk snow removal. If there was more enforcement, there'd be more capacity. Yeah, I agree with you. I think some of my new colleagues are finally getting in their heads that uh, they want to tackle the issue of snow removal and illegal parking. Well, what is what is the what is the fine for? Not snow removal. Is it, is it I like, got to plead ignorance. It's not it, much, though. So. It's no. really, it's it's more of a, this woman brings up a good point because I, I came down Parade Street today. Yeah. And it's business as usual. Right. They're blocking the sidewalks. Uh, there's businesses where, top of my hill, they got a, a bank of snow that's easily eight and a half feet high. So all the kids are parked on the sidewalk because their parking places are gone. We refuse to do anything. I mean, it's, it's, the ordinances are there, but, uh, I don't know how the new, new administration is going to approach it. The other ones have been very lax on it. Look, you had two weeks it took you to clear the streets after the snowstorm. Yeah. And that, that's on, you know, after a while that, that becomes old, okay? Right. They, they can't all be elderly people and they can't all be, you know. Well, what I, what I noticed was after the storm, Jump in? Yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Okay, so um, I did go upstairs and talk to the mayor's new executive assistant and showed her the picture specifically of one of the mini malls, and she turned that in um, to code enforcement, which I understand is what you have to do. But the other interesting thing was the Erie Times News did an article about um, failure to clear sidewalks, and mm-hmm. they mostly emphasized residences. The interesting thing is their entire property, none of the sidewalks were cleared. And which, which mall, are, which mall are you, 
Are, which mini mall are you referring to? I mean, Oakwood Plaza on oh, West yeah. 26. Across from Blessed Sacrament. Okay. But the, but the entire property of the Erie Times News from Sassafras to the west, they did not plow, and the downtown plowing stopped at Sassafras. Are you talking uh, right after the storm? or I mean, when, give us a time frame. Like that, two weeks later. I tell you this, I went by St. Mary's home. Okay. And it was, sidewalks were cleared. Yeah. Uh, the Times News, shame on them. Absolutely. Shame on them for uh, going after elderly people and homeowners. I remember this happened back when Joyce was mayor. She made a big deal of it, and they went by her house, and right. she had about three feet of snow. Yeah. So I'm going, you know, either we have rules or we don't. Right. If you remember, ma'am, there was a councilman that tried to do something. His name was Alexandrovich. Yeah. It was the newspaper that ruined him. And, yeah. And Pretty much costed him. It, it cost chance. him his job and the media. Yeah. So, but I agree with you, man. But what? Absolutely. I, for, there's no reason that the Times News should not have, out of everybody. Yeah. As what they do to people and how they point people out for the Times News to not have it done. That more property along of 26th Street. It's not plowed either. No, there's, there's so much around town that... I was amazed that the even the landlords are doing it, and uh, what they're doing, they're pushing the snow across the street into other people's property. I'm getting, I'm getting complaints there, and there's nothing we can do about that. Yeah. That that's a private matter, but right. maybe we're going to have to readdress the whole issue because uh, it bothers me that uh, you know we should be told we're, we're blaming kids for walking on the street, and the sidewalks aren't cleared, especially by businesses. You know, that, especially the ones that write up those of us that. Yeah, right. I hesitate to walk somewhere when all of the sidewalks in my neighborhood are not clear. And it, it's very unnerving to be driving at night along Green Garden or West 20 or East 26. Mm-hmm. People are unpredictably walking in the street because they don't have sidewalks to walk on. Oh, I agree with you. And I, yeah. I, I'm going to tell you what they told me. It's not code enforcement. Uh, when when the cars are parked on the sidewalk, it it becomes an issue for the police department yeah. or engineering, and en- engineering is going to defer well, she's right. to the police department. It's about the snow, not where the vehicles she, are parked. She's correct. But, but it's, even the snow, on, they're, they're, they're going to, they, you know, it comes down to everybody's pointing the finger. So I'm going to ask the mayor's assistant to look into it. And find out once – we'll see if this administration it's a is going to be any different. What it is, is it's, it comes down to enforcement. It does. You know, it's kind of like the noise ordinance, you know. Yeah, council the, gave the, all the rules. The, 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 they're on the books. Now, they choose to enforce it or they choose not to enforcement, enforce it. I mean, there's not – I mean, that's up to them. But, as, I mean, the, the rules are on the books. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to snow plowing and snow shoveling, there's a lot of black area, you know, as far as, you know – are, are they older people? Are they able to do it? I mean, the amount of snow, the time it comes. But you know, judging you, by judging by what what I saw, yeah. there's a lot of young people aren't shoveling. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was pathetic. It was terrible. I mean, she's right. I mean, it was. So, so another point I want to make is yes, we had lots and lots of snow this year, but this is a chronic issue of the businesses not plowing. And so, if there was a, an atmosphere where Enforcement on at least commercial property was the norm. Mm-hmm. Enough equipment available to do it in a timely fashion. People would not have the excuse that there's not enough equipment because if the business was there, the capacity would be there. If the demand was there, the capacity would be there. Do you live on the west side of town? Yes, I do. I live near Green Garden. Have you been over by Liberty Plaza? Not lately. It, I, I heard a rumor that they're going to, uh, if they don't get snow in South Korea, they're going to have the Olympics there in that parking lot across from Liberty Plaza. Well, I'll let you guys go on with your entertainment. Thank you. Yeah, they used to see the snow mound at Liberty Plaza. It is literally, if it's 20 feet, yeah. I'm not kidding you. Right. You could have the men's downhill and the women's downhill up there. Yeah, right. Go ahead, caller. Snow removal. Boy, if anybody knows about it, it's you. God put it there. Let God take it away. We well, took it away today. Well, you know. Some of it. Code enforcement's a joke. Zimmerman <coughs> backs into his check. 
I mean, they, they want to pass the buck. You go around, even the vet's hospital didn't have their sidewalks plowed. No, but I saw a couple bit. I saw St. Mary's, uh, the home had their shovel. And all these businesses, you know, when Mark wanted to get at them, our yep. little friend up at the Times News blew him right out of office. I wish I would have known they didn't. I, I should have rode, I don't ride by her like I used to. I would have loved to have brought that up at the meeting. That here's a paper picking on 90 year old women. Yeah. You know, and. Well, that paper is just nothing but a fish wrap. But let's get down to the serious. What, which one? The Butler Bugle? Uh, yeah. yeah right. That's a Butler Bugle, all right. Well, it's printed Butler. It's, it's not even printed. around here, it might so. As well be in front it's business. Of how, did, how did you like your pay cut as being a councilman? Oh, you're talking about the long meetings? Yeah. Well, it comes with the territory. I didn't know that we had people who voted for total idiots. And they are total idiots if they don't know Robert's rule of order, if they don't know where they're supposed to ask questions in that caucus room where everything should be hid from the public and not bring it out and gab, 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 gab. You know, I, I said to myself, I've seen enough of this. She is going to be a real pain, and I won't mention any names. <laughs> And I, I, I could not stand it. I mean, my God, how does her husband put up with her? Well, I will say this. We do not interrupt the public when they're talking unless they get out of hand. Right. Okay. Interrupt when somebody up at your and, dais up there is talking either. And we don't, and we're not supposed to debate each other. There's rules that when one person has the floor. Of order. You let them have their say, and then you rip them. When it's your turn. Wait, John, let me jump in. What What am I missing? I haven't seen it. John. Well, what happened was. What's going on? Councilman, I want to say names, but one councilman was talking. Okay. You know, when we separate a resolution, we have the discussion. Okay. So the discussion, the one council person was, I have to use the term council person because this other council person will rip me again. Because so, you said council person or well, councilman? Because I'm 70 years old and I slip once in a while. And say what? You know. <laughs> oh, anyways, go ahead. But anyway, it, it was brought up. It, he was talking. And he was interrupted. And, and The council person was interrupted. Right. So By another council person? Right. So he tried to say, look, I have the floor. And then a couple of us on that side had to tell the president, hey, you know what? Let, let him talk. Because when it's your turn to talk, yeah. you get to, you know. So one count is interrupting another council in the middle of a meeting. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, was a, it was a fiasco. I could not believe it. And there weren't any suppository sales at that, that meeting either. Hey, you know what? Uh, I, she's taking it well. I, uh, well after, after the meeting, she, <laughs> she, okay, took me a she, she came up to me and she goes, she, she started laughing. And I, she goes, I think I, I goofed. And I said, Three times. Yeah, I said, it's okay, because if that's the worst you do, that's not bad, you know. And she was real careful last meeting. Well, yeah, I saw that. But, but you know, she has a sense of humor, and I, I like Sonia for it. She but, has to learn. Well, yeah, she... she has to learn to, to get up there and rule with an iron hand. You know, it took me about a month, a month or two to get comfortable up there, because... Well, yeah, because everybody, you know, it, it's a new thing. She'll be she'll be okay. There's I, a learning curve. Yeah, she'll be okay. She's she can handle herself, and I and I enjoyed it. She come up to me and she says, "I think I I goofed up," and I said, "Well, maybe a little bit, but that won't, you know." But that one guy who says that there's leeway to get rid of the your solicitor down the line, you know, he he's voting like he did, like I told you he did before. Yeah, I I don't agree with a part time solicitor, and I'll tell you why. I. He may watch himself real careful this year, but there's no way that a major city like us, and when, when they pointed out Lancaster, Lancaster is as big as Mill Creek. And, oh, yeah. And Mill Creek budgets $1 million, and we budget 670000 for the whole department. Now, every time a council person has to go up and ask a question, that, that clock could start running at a hundred and a quarter an hour. You know why Mill Creek's, they have a, they, they, there's a million dollars, ours is six. That's because they're in court. And, okay. Yeah. And they lose. We're going to be in court because we, we have, uh, we have cases all the time that, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, you figure out if you talk to him for five minutes, he's going to charge you an hour. Well, usually it's a quarter hour. What they do is they, what, how they usually work them at a hundred quarter an hour, 
Uh, if you go five minutes or so, it's fifteen. It's fifteen minutes, right? So then. The whole thing. What happens if he goes to Harrisburg? What happens if he goes to Cleveland? What happens <coughs> if he goes to Pittsburgh? Well, we were told uh, we'll discuss that when we get there, but I guess what it boils down was this. You're going to get there real fast. Was the previous solicitor full time? Yes. So if this guy's part time, then there's a major savings as far as health well, benefits, pension. Well, here's the thing: uh, his salary was about. With salary benefits, you're looking around a hundred and a half. Yeah. Okay, for the previous. Yeah. And that's including benefits. I'm mm-hmm. solicitor. So what would what would what would be the figure uh, with expenses and at the part time? Well, the whole department was only budgeted at six hundred seventy thousand this year. Okay. That's with uh, two two full time attorneys, uh, part time paralegal, and a secretary. Okay. And, and, the, and the solicitor. Well, obviously, I mean, paying them part-time and not paying benefits and pension is, has to be a savings to the taxpayer. Why? No, it's not a savings to the taxpayer. Why, Why wouldn't it be? Why? Because it's not a savings to the taxpayer. You, you, because in the end, we're going to pay more. You, you, yeah, anytime you – you're assuming he's going to work, he said, 20 hours a week. It all depends on what his expenses are and how much – how many hours he works. Well, that's what we don't know, but – Well, that, that, that's, that's what you get. But, uh, you know, <laughs> ju- judging from our experience, what we spent in that department, how many times we've gone to court, yeah. it doesn't look good. Oh, uh, what happened with, uh, nice. with the port authority? What do you mean? That table? What do you mean? Uh, you mean that Ferris wheel and everything else? Oh, that's their that's their plan. They, we can't table that. That's their plan. They they submit. That's their what do you call it? Their. Uh, it wasn't brought up. That's their. I understand where you're coming from, but I thought they were going to approach council to get an okay to have that. Well, what they're going to do is they wanted council. We're going to have another meeting. We only we we only had a 15 minute meeting in the back room at our caucus. Bathroom. Huh? In the caucus room. Oh, I thought you said the bathroom. No, no, the back room. In when we meet before the meeting, so we fifteen minutes. She went through it pretty quick, Brenda Sandberg. So like the like like you should have went for vetting for that sewer authority. But what we're going to do is we're going to meet. Uh, Sonia was setting it up, and we're going to meet uh, probably January, February. Probably uh, it's going to be February. It looks like. And we'll, uh, we'll, we're gonna go over the whole plan in a little more detail. But remember this, it's their plan and they own the land. Now, the only time council's gonna get involved will be if there's any zoning issues or anything that gets built down there has to go through council because of the height restrictions. I thought I owned that uh, public dock, the taxpayer. Well, you do, but the port authority was set up to run it yeah. and like, say they put that Ferris wheel in that they're talking about, okay? If they were to do that, that's a structure that has to come before council because of the height. Just like the hotels had to be, we had to get variances on the height on those. I think, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are, yeah. on the, but I publicly, I've said it before, I like the idea. I, I don't know why everybody's in shock. I, lo- I Actually, I kind of like I, it. I know our visitors in the audience are not going to be happy, but here's my take on it. This is a major city. You, it's not New York, but it's a major city. It's one of the 200 top cities in America. And in a city, you have high buildings. That is a, that is a fact. So if we assume that the downtown district runs from Sassafras to Holland and from 26th Street North, that's my idea, not written right. down. If if you determine buildings of any size can go in there, are you still with me, John? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, so just like New York. You, could you imagine going to New York City? And, and of course, it happens. Yeah. But they pay big money to buy air rights so that nobody can build a building next to them. Right. Because they realize that a high-rise building is good for the economy. People love living in high-rise buildings, looking out their window, and seeing the water and everything else. Now I know what I'm going to hear from the other side. But for years, that land stayed there. Nobody bought it. Nobody wanted to go down there. (coughs) Right? Right. People took the bluff thinking it was their land, and the state came in finally and built a nice walkway because people closed that off to the public. And the state took their land. 
Right. The state took it back. They said, you can't, you can't block off public access. So, look, we don't have any 30, 40 story buildings down there. There's still plenty of place to see the water. But if all you have to do is take a ride to the peninsula, which Northern City has, all you have to do is go a little bit west of Sassafras or a little – you go down East Avenue, you can see all the water you want. We have to develop the waterfront. It's the only piece of land that anybody gives a, yeah. a crap about in the city. Well, that yeah, – and it has to – it has to bring in tax revenue. You, we, you know, Erie's had a problem. Yeah, we give we, it away. We have a tendency of putting – Non-taxable entities on our most taxable property. Right. I mean that it made. I mean, and that's not even your or our fault. Well, you know, you're talking about that. What happened to the guy that had the? What happened to the guy that had the KOZ in Alerta? Yep. Yeah. He hey, blew out of there. Hey, John, you've been to Chicago, right? No, I haven't. Okay, go to Navy Pier, and everybody goes, "Oh my God! Wait, why don't we have Navy Pier in Erie? Why well, you're not going to?" Well, you uh, got to get a Navy Pier in Erie. Who's going to go? Well, it's too big. It's, you could but, have a mini Navy Pier. There you go. A and mini, I, and, and I, that's where, you know, I like the idea of a, I'm a Ferris wheel. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Well, it doesn't have to be. If she said it's not guaranteed to be a Ferris I, wheel, and I tell you, here's, a thought. Here's why I like it, Katz. I don't, you know, not only does it bring people here, but when people are driving across Presque Isle, yeah. one of the top uh, visitor attractions in the country, when they look across that water and kids in the back seat with mom and dad in front, we'll look at what's that over there. What is, did you see that? Is, yeah. And they see the lights on that thing and a Ferris, every kid loves a Ferris wheel. I don't know, I didn't at Cedar Point when it broke down at the top. I heard you paid the guy off though, John. Yeah, right. Uh, you know that one, the dragster, you ever see the dragster at Cedar Point where you yeah. go, and then you go over it and then you come straight back. I saw people literally stuck at the top of that thing, hanging backwards. And that's why I never go on that. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I, I laugh, I go. One quick thing and then I'll get off the line here. Go ahead. This, uh, dealing with reconstructing the old colonial forts down by, behind the old, uh, soldiers and sailors home. Yeah. I see they want to study now. Is that money going to come from the gaming for that study? Highly doubtful at this point. I know they're just starting to, uh, um, well, you know, you know, Carl Anderson yeah. and his friend, they're the ones that were on the, in the paper today. They're, they're at the beginning. There's a white, they, uh, uh, Mike Furman did a white paper on it. They're having a discussion on it up at the Jefferson Society. It's in its infancy, but there's talk, you know, and it does fit in with what's uh, the downtown a development corporation and the refocus plan in well, order you know, they, to bring they, they talked, revenue. They talked about Historical. it for years. They have talked about it for years. If but, authorities go down, we pay for them. Right, but the thing is, is this would bring this is a. a would bring visitors and, you know. When I was a kid, I played in all of them down there. We all did. First of all, the blockhouse is not part of the fort. Everybody has to know that. That's that's off the side. They built that afterwards. Well, the fort was technically on, like, between parade and, I think, um. I think they have an idea where the real fort was. It it was. It's, it's, no, it's down by, you know, where the railroad tracks is, where it starts heading up the bluff. It's right down, it's not right on Parade Street where it's at. It's down, located a little bit lower, down lower towards the water. Well, they, and then they moved it over there, and then they, you know, it's been a couple places. Years ago, they found some pie, or no, some uh, plates and stuff. Yeah, there, but, was, there was three of them. Two of them burned down and one got blown up. Well, right. it's, it's like the one in Waterford. Uh, the one was in the middle of, of the borough. Right. But there's another one that a, a professor of history told me is hidden and the only way they found it, they found it with uh, high technology that the military uses. Yep. They, they found some ground uh, interruption on the where they found there was another fort. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know that was Fort Waterford. And anyways, that's the only place in in the country where you have an American president wearing a British uniform. That's true. Have a great day. Thanks for calling. But getting back to uh, yeah, if you had a. If you had a mini pier, that's not bad. The key is economic. When you have it, you have mixed use. You have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but they have to bring tax revenue to the city. Are you there? I'm here. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I wanted to call in and ask some questions about the hotline itself. Yeah, go ahead. I find it kind of a fascinating concept in general. Um, can you give some comments on, like, the history of the hotline? It, it was It was started by Mario Bagnoni. Many years ago. Many years ago. Yeah. 
And he used to have a guest on there called Randy Brewer, who was a local host. A talk, a radio talk show. Right. Then when Mario passed away, uh, Jim Thompson took it over. And Jimmy Thompson ran it for a number of years, and I used to come on once in a while with him. That's when I first started, because yeah. Jimmy invited me to come on back way back then, yeah. And then after Jimmy left council and he, he passed away, yeah. uh, it kind of sat there, and he asked me if I would run it. And I never intended to be here forever, but... Well, you were the controller. You were right upstairs. Yeah, I was which, a controller at the time, in which fact. Helps, and, I mean, which helps matters. But uh, a lot of council people do not want to come on the show. No, they and don't. And a lot of a lot of people on the upstairs don't want to come here because uh, they're, not, they're uncomfortable facing real questions without restrictions. But, yeah, I've, I've noticed that as a theme kind of in the city. Yeah, hey, I have trouble getting guests on here that are... Uh, Let's say city connected with departments. Yeah. But yeah, that's the history roughly. Uh, Mario started many years ago. Any idea what year or? Oh uh, boy, that's a good question. Let's see. I'd say 80s or maybe 80s. I, I'm thinking it was, yeah, it was back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. I'd have to look it up and get back to you. And then Jimmy was, well Jimmy, he, Jimmy well, did it in the 2000 era. Yeah, and Jimmy, and then he had cancer because we remember we used to do the, uh, Blood drives and stuff. And oh, I, t- I tell you what, ma'am. I think it started roughly when Joyce Savakia was president. I mean, a mayor. Because you, I, you remember that? Remember the fluoride yeah. was. Remember putting fluor- fluoride and putting it into the water. I, I remember Joyce was there. I don't know if he did it when Lou was here. It, no, it, I, it really came in when cable TV came into the city. Yeah, right. Okay. So that's mid eighties. And uh, yeah, so he, yeah, he took it over. I, I got to tell you, he he loved the show. Yeah. But if you well, know. Hopefully, this, with the spirit of transparency and, and the new mayor, perhaps more guests will be willing to come on. Well, I, uh, yeah. I think it's a great thing. They're, they're invited, ma'am, and I invite – I got some different guests that have asked me to come on. They'll be, they'll be coming on later dates. The one, the one thing that they've said when they've been invited down here is that they're working. I mean, do, do the taxpayers want them down here talking on television? Well, or do you want them upstairs working? And that's what they say. I mean, I'm not I'm saying I don't agree with her. I mean, I, I do. Mean, if it was every day or, you know, every week, maybe, okay. But one hour every couple months. Yeah, I, I, used, to have, I used to have, like, if we had a question about. They did used to. Code enforcement, I would have, like, the, the director. And I would tell the pu- pu- public, don't don't come down here and yell and be right. Here, here's what they let, let them talk, you know. What they used to do was. Would they, uh, when Jim Thompson was here, they had the book of the departments, and they would call up. Upsta- you know, somebody would call in with a complaint, and they would call upstairs. Oh, they can pass them in. Correct. No, right, and they'd be on the phone, and we'd call upstairs and say, "Are you guys?" Or the streets and say, "Can you guys send a plow here?" Can, or you know, call that department and say, "Can you do this? Do that?" But what happened was during the last administration, no more phone calls. Because they got work to do, they don't want you know they don't have time. Because when a caller calls, a lot of times they're irate and they don't want to hear nothing. And they, when you're calling them upstairs, it's boom, boom, back and forth. And so that's why that's kind of you know that doesn't occur anymore. But listen, they listen. They watch up. Yeah. They're watching right now. Oh hey. They listen. So hope that answers your question. You got more questions? Yeah, I got a couple more questions. Well, go ahead. What's the weirdest question that you've got on the hotline? I don't, I don't try to remember. <laughs> that just like kind of blew you away or it was just so, so bizarre? I mean, it's not very obvious. It's not that people come here and then call us for the front row and ask us questions. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, that's a good question. I don't know what to, I can't remember the weirdest one. I don't know. I, there's, we've had a lot. I mean, most of the time it's not about questions. It's more of complaints or, uh, concerns. Or suggestions, but they don't. I mean, most people that call, like they're pretty knowledgeable and educated, because it's mostly the same people that have watched the show. I mean, you tell me if you agree. I mean, yeah. I mean, the times I've been here, it's the same voice. I get, I get more people that were, are afraid to call in that will talk to me yeah. uh, at the breakfast place. Yeah. Well, what happens is when, we, when you go out and cat, he's right. When you're out in public, people are say, "I watched the show," or "I've watched a replay of it." But I don't. I don't like calling. I don't want to talk publicly. Yeah. So you know, what do you think about this? What can you do about that? And we don't identify you. No, we don't. We never. You know, well, some people we go. We know first names, but we, you know, as far as that goes. But. Well, hopefully you can create some goals, or maybe even have every couple of weeks, like the code enforcement person come on, and then you know, make it so that people do feel more comfortable. They're always invited. 
Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing they fear is when they come on here, they get hit with a good question, and people want an answer. <laughs> maybe it's partly due. Maybe it's my fault. I'll tell you why. I'm kind of a loose cannon. Nobody really calls to this show and says, hey, uh, Andy, I want to thank you for yeah. for trying your best to be a good uh, code of, I want to thank you. Well, no, a, it's, they, it's, they are upset. They are angry, which I'm not saying is wrong, which is probably, you know, it you know be, why it's I, legit. I'm a loose cannon. I'm dangerous. Yeah, you are. Because at my age, I don't really, I don't really care about, I don't care about 10, 20 years from now. Yeah. You know, so the answers I give are more like, I, I you know, I'm going to do what's right at the time. Yeah. You know, that might not have been. Let me tell you one thing. You about know, when you're young, you don't do that. I'm going to so, tell you one you know. thing about this guy right here, what I know about him. I've known him for a long time. He speaks from the heart. He doesn't use politics. He doesn't play games. He's his own person. People vote for him. It does, he, he doesn't work with people. He is his own voice. He may be wrong sometimes. He may not, he may, he may not be right. But what he votes on is what he believes in. And that's why he's on this show. That's why he's done this show. And that's why he's an elected official. Is he right all the time? No. I mean, he and I, we banter back and forth all the time about stuff that I think he's wrong about and vice versa. But he's his own person. When she, when she asked me about the weirdest thing, there was this one guy who used to, he used to berate me every show. And my poor mother would sit there and she'd call me and she'd go, Oh my God, the guy's tearing you to ribbons. And I go, He's okay. He's, you know, he's, right. he's got his right to his opinion. Yeah. So I, I just challenged him one day and I said, If I lied to you, tell me where I lied. Yeah. Show me a specific thing that I said. <coughs> you know. We've had people that and, call and, and a lot of times it's the newspaper. They take your, they take you out of context. They're famous for like, you know, they look at, it's like, once they, like, I was reading Kevin, not Kevin, but, uh, you, you look at the editorials. If you, if you saved them for 20 years, you'd see them guys waffling. They flip more than a sea, than a seal at SeaWorld. Yeah. There's stories, I'm telling you, it's crazy. You know, a lot of people in the administration, uh, they don't think a lot of people watch this show. See, I say things because he's elected, I'm not. Do you know how many people do watch the show? Do you have we don't have, viewership? we don't do Nielsen ratings, nah, but um, what we do do is when we're out, when when we're out and about, a lot of, I, I honestly, I, I didn't think too many people watched it either. I'm not going to lie. But when I'm out and about and I go to here, I'm out, I'm at, that, I'm at this, 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 hey, aren't you that guy that does Kaz's show? Aren't you, I know, what's your name again? And I say, holy cow, a lot of people do want, I mean, there's not a lot. Because yeah, everybody's everybody's busy, but they watch the replays. Yeah, they watch us in Canada. I know that. Yeah. And now we're on the internet. Uh, we may be out in the county. I heard there might be, we might be going out there. How about that one? You know, in the county. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun. Because a lot of the problems are city county problems that we're going through right now, and I mean, hopefully with. A lot of these new elected officials, we start working on things together, which has not happened. See, we don't play well in the sandbox right now, elected officials. We we really don't. Are you leaving me already? But, uh, yeah, we don't play well in the sandbox together, and that's something we got to change. Have you ever thought about taking the show on the road? Uh, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. You, I mean, that TV doesn't, doesn't move too well, probably. Uh, you have to, I'm not sure the technical aspects of it. I've done radio shows. I do a little volunteer work on a weekend. We've moved them out. But I don't know what the, how you would do this one. I, I'm sure with the new technology, you know, you could do it, you could probably, uh, we talked about, when DJ was here, we talked about taking this to, uh, Channel 2 and doing it at night. The problem we have here is, because this is a city-run show, and uh, we have to, you know, Mike is our engineer, we are limited to the hours that uh, city, uh, the city hall is open in and different things, okay. and contractually with... You know, let, let me say one thing before, because we have to let other callers call in. I'm going to tell you something. The last administration, Kaz was out of town one day. I brought in a guest... And we talked about issues, city and county. The previous administration did not 
like what we were talking about, and they pulled the show off the air. For how many weeks? It was the, the, just well, this one, because we tape once a week. Just that one, they pulled off. They pulled the show off the air because it gave two points of view. But that was previous administration. Sure. It was a hot topic. But it, it hasn't happened again. You have to remember, just because you sit up here, politics is involved in everything. See, count, council controls this show. Council controls it, but uh, the mayor can pull that plug at any second. But then he's going to... They pay the bill, technically. They write the check. But then you're going to play the game with the public and... Yeah. Then you get into drama, this, that. They want to... The pre, I don't, you know, the new mayor, I don't know. But the previous mayor, he would pull the plug. Like that. But now, we'll see. We did talk about, uh, you know, DJ and I, we, uh, we still might take the show once a month or so. If this show was on a different channel. At, at evening. But we've evening. talked about that for we a while. We do it at That's evening. been a lot of talk. If this show was on a different channel, there would be a lot of different things and a lot of different reality stuff going on. But at this point, that's old news. We got a new mayor, we got a new vision, we got a lot of people involved. It's time to take things in a new direction. City, county, state, school board, everybody working together. Until we get on that page, we're going to just continue to sing. But thanks for calling. Thanks. Thank okay. you. You know, that's why. How do you hang this up again? Oh, you hit the right there, the orange one. If we did take it at, you know, we talked about taking away from the binds of City Hall and opening it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because here you, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of be. Little, you have to be correct. Or else we will not, it, previously, I don't know about, I'm not saying that, that it's bad what was going on. Hold it's on, a new, It's a new administration with a new vision, a new attitude, and with anything else, that's what you need. Thank you. Go ahead, caller. Two things. First of all, I'm here in the audience because I don't have a television. And the only way I can watch, participate live is by physically being here. And I'm not the only one. Uh-huh. With the technology existing here, people could come and stand in front of the mic and talk just as well as the phone. My other concern is about the court. The reason why it's important for the city to here in public study session prior to the ex- – it's unfortunate because the, the meeting this Wednesday, the board is going to vote on the plan. Mm-hmm. There should have been a study session in front of the city residents prior to that date. What's going to happen is they're going to come into you with land use proposals down the road and say, well, this is in our plan. It was approved, so you should approve it. I think that it's unfortunate that the city didn't really have an opportunity to adequately comment on that. Well, I think the... I, want, I also want to say my concern about structures going in down there, that is a very precious resource. And what is special about the Bayfront is the only real place that you can still see the Bayfront and walk by them are Little Liberty Park and um, Dumb's Landing. Everywhere else you a building alongside you. And the most iconic thing down there is the fishermen. It would be very unfortunate to seal that area in with lots of structures just to try to squeeze money out of it. I think that uh, a Ferris wheel there would add a lot of light pollution to the area. A lot of what? Light pollution. Light at pollution? Night, at night. And it's an overused concept. If you look at really beautiful waterfront areas like the Chattanooga waterfront or even New York City or Pittsburgh, there are not structures surrounding people so they can't see to either side of them. Well, one thing about, let's talk about, let's take the light pollution thing. Uh, where If they're located, there's only, there's only um, Hammett Hospital, if you're looking up on the bluffs, that would actually be bothered by that because the, uh, mostly right there, it's non-profit, um, it's not it's not residential area. If you were to put a um, Ferris wheel in that area, when you agree on that side, huh. that's the problem with light pollution. The light pollution problem is from my house on West Twenty Third Street. I look north and I can see the glow from the mall. It's the overall contribution of excessive and misdirected light in in our environment that is ruining our ability to see sky. One of the best places 
in the eastern United States to look at the sky is Cherry State Park near Connors Court. The second best place is out in the middle of the lake. So we could actually capitalize on that if we don't add too much more light pollution in our area and degrade that darkness that's out in the middle of the lake. I don't know what to say. There's, there's money to be had. There's serious money to be had by helping people to come to areas that provide dark sky. Downtown Pittsburgh has tons of buildings on the waterfront. There are areas. We're not talking about building tall buildings in Erie north of the Bayfront Highway. You know, there's not many there except for the hotel. We're talking, most towns build the tall Plan. The Port Plan wants to build a whole bunch of buildings down by Liberty Park and Dunkin' Land. Yeah, they're, they're small. They're, they're, there's nothing there that was 15 or 30 stories high. It's not just the height. It's the acrossness. If, if you you are walking now... I would have to... It's yeah. ...outside the hotel or the conference facility, you don't get the same feeling of openness that you currently have at Dunkin' Landing at Liberty Park, but you're going to lose if they build a whole bunch of more buildings there. Hey, yeah, at this point, listen. Go ahead. We need taxable property. Yeah. Okay, on that property. We have to have taxable property. She's right with what she's saying about light, this, that, this, and that. Well, I don't know. I don't, it it has know, to be mixed use. I'm going to ask her. Where you have access. Yeah. You do have to have access, mm-hmm. and you have to have uh, – you know, residential, you have commercial, mm-hmm. and you know, and you have community. And it has to be a, a responsible development where all those needs are met. And you can't cut off the public and you have to watch the way you establish these, uh, these new developments. But in order, I mean, for light and this other thing, I mean, we need tax revenue. I mean, I, we, I don't know of anybody that takes the boat ride in Chicago. Okay. The waterfront needs to be, it's life. It's livelihood. It's life. That's where you want life. That's, you know, the tower is lit. The people I talk to, they're, look, we're not, the, the odds in Erie of building 30 and 40 story buildings. Not going to happen. Probably rare. Not going to happen. There were, the biggest one I've seen planned down there was a uh, 20 story condo, I think, they were talking about. And, and that got blown out, but the waterfront in every city, every everyone has a component of public access, which we have. Yeah. You can, in every plan we've had, you can walk in front of the convention center. You can walk in front of the hotels. That was guaranteed. Yeah. When they talked about closing off the East Dock, where Rum Runners is, yeah. they had to have a. They were going to gate that off as a gated community. They didn't. Even, they just went nuts when they put um, in front of the convention center. They didn't. Uh, they put rocks down there instead. You know the walking. Well, yeah, Eddie Kissel was watching. Yeah, that. they went Eddie Kissel on those. But to think that we're not going to develop the waterfront, I, I. You have to. Where would you enjoy walking more? Would you enjoy walking more on Diamond's Landing or Liberty Park, where it's open? Or would you enjoy walking more with the hotel behind you? I'd like walk. I'd rather walk where it's open. Well, that's that's you, but I'd rather walk. I'd rather walk. The point you made earlier was it's okay because you can get in your car and go to Presque Isle. Mm -hmm. Bayfront is the backyard for the people who don't have cars, who can't afford to do that. Where 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 was this outrage? Where was this argument? And, and I keep hearing this, and, and, and you gotta remember now, I'm probably a little older than you are, okay? I'm guessing. Where was this outrage when I was in high school? Do you remember that? Unfortunately. It, it was a piece not. of, cra- <laughs> it was a piece of crap down there. It was a place nobody went. Yeah, okay. Even, even the fishermen, the brave of heart, had to, tra- what they had to Listen, cross cats. railroad tracks, and, and literally all kinds yes, of- I grew up on East Front Street. Okay, as a kid. Okay, that the you know you know what the bluffs were called before the bluffs, the dumps. That's what it's all over people garbage. dumped trash over that hill. The, before the uh, before the pretty Bayfront Highway, it was a dirt road. Well, you know when you're behind the when you're behind the soldiers and sailors home, and you're traversing that highway. 
Yeah. And just before you make that sharp right turn to go on the east side connector, yeah. I used, as a young man, I used to drive my truck down there yeah. for a certain authority when yeah. I was in college, and we dumped back there. Yeah. It was unsightly. It I was remember the dumps. I remember the sitting blocks. there going, it was the dumps. So I challenge you to take a trip to Chattanooga and walk their beautiful pedestrian bridge and see their waterfront that doesn't have any buildings in front. Why, why don't you go, well, I, I would challenge you to go to Peoria, Illinois, Wilmington, Delaware, San Diego, New York, Chicago, Milwaukee, Duluth, Pittsburgh. okay, Pittsburgh, and I'm not even, I haven't even touched the surface yet. Well, Pittsburgh oh. and New York both have a lot of areas where there's no buildings right within several hundred feet of the water. And, and we do too. If, if you go, if you no, go. you're right, she is right. Yeah. She's right about that because when you come, when you drive, when you drive down into New York City and it, their, theirs is done right. And actually, that's, she's kind of right about that. They have public space, yeah. and then then next to the highway up here is where you have all the buildings, the Trump Tower, da, 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 which is the way, which is right. But the, here's the thing: those are all taxable properties. The, they have the public space, then they have taxable property. Okay, the way that our city is set up is wrong, and I just talked about it five minutes ago. On the top, where we should have high rises, tax, pay, we have nonprofits. Mm-hmm. That is the difference. They, in New York and these successful cities that have the public space free on the bayfront, which is ideal, you're right. But we have we before none of us were here. They've screwed it up, and we have non-taxable Hammett, Gannon, all these on top of the bluffs where you should have high-rise apartments, high-rise offices. That's a San Diego plan, and we have that one building down there, but the rest of it. Is Hammett and Gannon, and it is non-profit. So you got to have. That's our most taxable property. It's a good thing we didn't follow the Rotoval plan, though. The Ro- yeah, right. Rotoval said that the whole east side should be industrial. But she is right. I, she is right, though. New York City, they've done it right. When well, you drive down the road, they got basketball courts, tennis courts, walking, yeah. fairs, festivals. But when you look to the left, when you know when you're up that hill, when you, the Trump Towers are there, the um, all the apartment buildings, the office buildings overlooking the water, and they're taxable. We have beautiful public space, open public space. People will come in droves. We have lots of buildings that are just trying to eat money out of people. We will not. You're absolutely them. right. You have to have a a balance. And right now we have no balance. Like I, we just said, you have, we have we have had a problem of non-taxable entities on our most taxable property, and the the, the Hammett, I'm sorry, Hammett and Gannon, I'm a Gannon graduate, but guess what? It's killing us. That downtown and Hammett, they are our most taxable properties, and we are not taxing them. The Bayfront, we have to find where we have public access, we have uh, community involvement, where you have a mixed use to bring in revenue to help pay for everything. It's, it's unfortunate that we have to do it that way because you're right. It's now now i got to blow a bubble in, in Freda's argument. No, it's, she's right. She's no, got a good argument. Because I'm looking at the gentleman sitting to the left of her. Kevin? Yes. And his foot, his football team. He's a Steelers fan. He's right responsible. There. That and gives his, you no play at his, his football and baseball team are responsible for some, <laughs> some really eyesores, according to Freda. Okay? The stadium? The stadiums, yes. They're right on the waterfront. Yeah. And why did they do that? They're, ta- they're non-taxable. Uh, they were not voted on by the city of Pittsburgh. In fact, they were voted down. Right. It was Tom Ridge that built them right. against the will of the people. And yet, they built a subway yeah. for eight football games a year. I'll tell you what's been the and, biggest. And, you know, and of course, now, am I against that? Absolutely not. You know why? Because we were going to build our ballpark down by the waterfront. I wish they would have. Well, I'd say when I was a kid and I watched them build that bus company and that building on the edge, I, and I'm like, what, why are we putting the cheapest mode of transport on some of our waterfront, bayfront property? Why are we putting a non-taxable entity on our most taxable pro- a bus station? Why? Because the money was there at the time. Tom Ridge was in office, and we put that there. Then we put the thing out at the end of the dock that fell into the water. But we better we better move on to another. Yeah, call. we got to move on. But thanks, we appreciate. But you it. know, thanks. going back to our argument before we. Yeah. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Cash. Yeah. We're gonna have to put that. Hold on, let me 
time I get my mute here. You have the what? Yeah, he's got to mute the TV because he's getting that. Oh, feedback. you're getting that kickback. Yeah. Um, my mute button always doesn't work. You got to remind people they got like a DJ would say ten minute limit and choose. Well, those. yeah, they, we got we got an actual audience here today, yeah. so. Okay. Well, yeah, it's it, quite a long time, but. Um, we would have called it the peanut gallery back when I was a kid. I think she's ex- ex- you know, like you would point out, we got to figure out where the money comes in for all those things too. And that's part of the issue that we have with the city, where the money coming in. Like, I agree, we need to tax some of the property. And I think I made a statement once before that what I feel needs to be done. And, of course, you said the state has to make the change. Yeah, they do because we're, we're bound by – look, the two hotels that are down there should be paying taxes. Well, here's what I really feel, that we should be taxing all property by the square foot that mm-hmm. you have property. What becomes tax exempt is what built on that property, such a, uh, like the Hammond Hospital. Maybe the building won't be taxable, you, but they still pay tax. Well, that was Mario's plan. That it, was called the land tax. Here's why that'll never change. Why? I'm going to tell you why. So that, then, then the city has a definite income source of a certain amount every year just from the land, land tax. Yeah, land tax. Yeah. I mean, they'll fight that. It, you know, getting the getting the uh, the nonprofit status changed is is virtually impossible through the state, and the reason of that is because there's more rural um, lawmakers and uh, representatives than um, city uh, than That's urban, every year. and they're being more rural. Um, if those rural lawmakers vote to do away with tax, and it, now people that live out in the county and those their number one place is church. Okay, that's where everybody congregates. That's where all their voters are. Um, if they start taxing these nonprofits, those people will not vote for them anymore. They will be so upset. And if that starts, then it's never going to happen because the rural areas, the city guys would probably do away with non-tax. I mean, non-taxables do play a part. Well, you know, I think they should at least play public safety fee. They should. Lot some cities uh, a user tax, a user fee, a, a public. Not in Pennsylvania, though. No. I don't want to take. A- I'm on the phone like before here, so somebody else can call. Well, no, go ahead. I appreciate what you mentioned. The idea of the Ferris wheel, by the way, sounds good, except I don't know how long, how much season we would have for the Ferris wheel, you know, with the way we have our winter's weather here. Well, in Chicago, they run it all year, I think. Well, yeah, I wouldn't do that here. I was a courier <laughs> calling you when John said that he was on a Ferris wheel that hopefully he wasn't stuck on the top seat of that Ferris wheel there calling you from there. <laughs> I, there. You know, I think if you look into it, John paid off the guy. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I'll, I'll have to talk with you next year, next uh, week here, uh, when I can get a chance to spend a little more time. I'll, I'll tell DJ you're looking for him, okay? I'm the other loose cannon, by the way. Yeah, you are too. You Well, you remember, Doc, when we were young. Nobody, nobody cared. Uh, nobody cared about the waterfront. Well, they would, we but they didn't even. No, I, I, yeah, the fishermen did, but nobody ever went down there. It was, it was unsightly. I got a picture. I'm going to save it. I'm going to bring it in. I got to find it because it's back in the days when you couldn't digitally storm. You had they were actual pictures. I got a picture of that area down there, loaded with sewer pipes and uh, overgrown brush. There's nothing down there. Dead fish. Dead fish. Because I remember marching down. There was raw sewage. It was dumps. There was raw sewage running from Strong Vincent High School. They found out that the, the school the school wasn't connected. It was dumps, a dirt road, a beat down uh, grain elevator, yep. and trash. And that was it. But now it's turned. But maybe we should better, you know, get another caller in there. We had, we had businesses that uh, dealt with fishing, too, that... Uh, that's why I had a lot of smell down in that area too. Remember well, that? you get, you got to change the fishing laws. That's what killed the fishermen. Right. All right. I'll let somebody else call. Thanks for yep. calling. You know, one thing I did want to touch on before yeah. that we get the time. The city, they're off the economic development, five thousand dollar mini grants for businesses. I love that idea. Yeah. That, that's the kind of stuff we need because they take that money and they say they leverage it with more money get, to add to the small business. Before we go up here, I'll tell you the genesis of that. Okay. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, before the dumps and all the dilapidated buildings, uh, that was profit. Those places were all paying taxes. Those places were all employing people with You're right. Uh, yeah. life or, uh, wages. You could make a living. You had the sand docks, the ore docks, the pulp mill docks. You had all the oil tanks. There used to be another 
uh, electric plant on the west side of town right there by Cascade Creek. And nobody worried about the buildings then, did they? Yeah, no. No, but, but when, when all those places were up and operating and making money, you know, the Bayfront was a beautiful place because it was making money and paying taxes. It was, and, and the plan was to keep it that way. Yeah. But then when they, all those businesses left, we were left with a, a no-man's land down there. And it's just, they just abandoned. You know, and Penelope being down there, when they, I mean, all those jobs left. Yeah. You go, to, you go to Bethlehem, PA, and they got the steel mill there that they can't afford to tear down. Oh, yeah, they're making museums out of some of them, yeah. Yeah, that's a, you know, they, they pointed out, uh, the group that was trying to save McBride, they showed, uh, steel, steel stacks. I've been to steel stacks. Yep. But that's only part of the story. They had to save the steel plant because it's an environmental nightmare. Oh yeah. So what they do, they light it up at night, they try to paint it a little bit. Okay. They got a- People don't realize how much is covered up on the bayfront. Oh yeah. And they got a walkway around that place. But, but it has to be when you when what they did, John, they took all the buildings surrounding the plant, and they renovated them into yeah. TV stations, offices, condos, and everything, so that they made something out of that that old factory. Right. It has to be responsible, and it has to bring in revenue, and it has to be taxable. Yeah. And, but but you do because the way we've got it set up down there, it has to be community accessible. I mean, it's pretty difficult. To get all those elements into into a project, but he's right though. That used to be uh, oh, I know, we know. Job City down there. Absolutely. I mean, they used to have uh, you know uh, Littons down there before. You know, it's the shipbuilding, and you know, I'm glad they're there. You know, it's just uh, I wish we could you know where the water sewer plant is. Yeah. I wish to God that wasn't there somewhere else, but I know well, it has to be there. Oh, yeah, it has to be there. The I mean, it has to be. Right. I mean, it has to be there, but I just wish it wasn't. But that's a whole other topic. But thanks for calling. You got to blame the guys back in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah, an. I- well, that, that kind of plant's got to be where it is, like I said, because it's downhill. Yeah. You know what flows downhill? <laughs> yeah. <it does. laughs> Sometimes. I, I, it you does. know how much more you know, uh, Bayfront property would would open up if that plant wasn't located there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot. Yeah, because that's an awful smell sometimes. Yeah. It, but you know what that'd be good for down there? That'd be good for call that a no man's land. And you could put things in there that uh, aren't tourist-related, like, you know, warehouses or some down there. Yep. Just pass out nose plugs. We, we, when I was on the school board, we actually gave tax-exempt status because no taxes had been paid on it for years, and it sat there vacant until, like, Sunburst and those other places built there. Right. Yeah, yeah. But for a long time, that was, uh, that, that was drawing no revenue or anything. Yeah, yeah, you're right though. That is our most valuable property in. I, I ask people, we're. Taxes and we're losing. You don't, you don't see Wegmans coming here. You don't see any new restaurants. Well, you know, you don't see any new businesses. The only place they're going to come is a waterfront. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't, um, city, Joe? Inner city. You got. Lerda? Aren't they bringing Lerda back? To, yeah. At some sort? I think that'll help. I think it needs to be implemented, um, cautiously. Because a lot of, t- what I noticed before is people take advantage of it and then they take off. Um, I know you had the tiered structure. You got a structure, right? And then when their alert is up, we got to keep them here to hold them. We haven't talked to the new mayor, but I think we're 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 talking about maybe doing that again. Well, I think I I think we. I I see him on TV. I see him around. Uh, He's got ideas. We have business loans. We have a lot of good things going. We have uh, cooperation with the county, uh, school district. I mean, they got to go. We got to get things going on together and start bringing revenue to bring the city up slowly but surely. Took us. 150 years to destroy it. Hopefully it won't take that long to fix it, but we all got to start working together and making some proper decisions with... Let's see if this... Hang on. Did you got any other questions, John? I just, yeah, I just wanted to make another comment, though. Like you I'm said, sorry. I, I saw a booming industry on the Bayfront, and then I saw the dumps and the overgrown, and now it's looking pretty good again. Yeah. Think things come and go. They change, yeah. but, you know... But like, like you said, though, we got to get some taxpaying businesses along the waterfront. Correct. All right. Thanks Talk for to you calling. Later. And we'll, you know, we should probably say goodbye because we are probably off of the yeah, air. We're gonna have, but I wanted to say that it was uh, Chris Groner came down with a plan and approached council about a year and a half ago about possibly expanding our – the trouble we have with our loans is that we have to follow government. The state and the feds, whoever gives you the money, tells you how to run them. Right. So a lot of businesses that we dealt with uh, – weren't eligible for the loans. 
as they were structured. Right. And by the way, we do get paid back on those loans. We've had a very, to my knowledge, we have, haven't had default in a long time. Well, that's good because then you take that money and then you reinvest. Yeah, and, and I'll give you a real, the real quick answer was, uh, one day, like when Dairy Queen up by Pine Avenue wanted to expand and renovate, they used that program. Oh, well, yeah. But now there's other businessmen that talk to me that they, they're not eligible because they're not, uh, you know, what you do is so you, this is this loan structure is our money, right? And we will have our rules, which will be right. a lot more liberal. Now, a business a business that gets that type of a grant can take then go to a bank and say, or to, to another for for, to use it as leverage and say, I have this, I need that. So then that's how you expand small businesses. Well, say, say you have a business like, and I'll use a breakfast place. Uh, yeah. Say you got Nunsies in a breakfast place, and the parking lot is a mess, and they want to use that money to pave it. Yeah. Maybe it's eligible, maybe it's not. Right. In the old ways, it wasn't, you know. Right. And so what you're doing, you're saying, well, how do we keep, how do we keep businesses here? And you're right. If they can take the 5,000 and leverage it. Yeah. So be it, you know. Yeah. Well, Kaz, thanks for having me. I think we're way out of time. Yes, and we. Thanks we, you guys for coming in the we audience. We thank our audience. Uh, thanks e- for even coming. though the one gentleman is slightly misguided. He's, you know, Brown's fan here. He's. He's not, usually he has his coat, but he's got the Notre Dame coat today. So. <laughs> and the number four. We can blow that one again this year, but. Yeah, they'll screw it up. But, hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for listening, and uh, maybe we'll see you next week. Yeah, I think we will. There's going to be one week I'm going to be off because I have to I have to be out of town. Okay. All right. All right, when we turn, when we go off here, you guys can come up. Come up real yeah, quick. Does, but sometimes it. You can come up real quick if All you right, want. All right, come on up. Thanks for turning the camera off. Just, just, just stand right there. Right there. Yeah. Right there, you can call wherever you want. You guys can be wherever you want. Come on up here. Okay, come. <laughs> the peanut, we call the, they don't remember the peanut gallery. Am I too far out on this? My sister was in the Don't you know how to zoom on that or what? Yes. What? Move in some. Oh, you gotta get oh. mine. Crack the screen. That's a Use the wide angle lens. I got one. Want to know? No, go get go get my iPad. And take one with my iPad. I'll send it to you. But it's yours. Mine has Good enough. Okay. okay. If you want to take another one, grab your iPad. We'll take it on. No, and she says it's a better picture. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie Zone Government Access Channel Nine.